Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our TensorFlow extravaganza. In this part of our lecture, we shall embark on the journey of installing TensorFlow, the gateway to AI enchantment. So, fasten your seatbelts and prepare to dive into the technical realm of installation. Before we begin, let me assure you that installing TensorFlow is as delightful as receiving a package of freshly baked cookies. Now, there are multiple ways to install TensorFlow depending on your system and preferences. But fear not, for I shall guide you through some of the most popular methods. First, let's talk about installing TensorFlow using PIP, the beloved package installer for Python. Open your terminal and for our dear Python 3 enthusiasts, simply type the following command. Magically, PIP will fetch the latest version of TensorFlow from the Python package index, PIPI, and install it on your system. You may choose to add the upgrade flag to ensure that you have the latest and greatest version. Now, if you have a powerful GPU at your disposal, you can unleash its full potential by installing TensorFlow with GPU support. This will greatly accelerate your AI computations and make your models train faster than a speeding bullet. However, do keep in mind that setting up GPU support requires additional dependencies, such as CUDA and CUDN. To install TensorFlow with GPU support, we need to specify the correct version compatible with your CUDA and CUDNAN installations. For example, you can use the following command to install TensorFlow 2.5 with GPU support. But wait, there's more. For those who crave a little extra flavor, TensorFlow offers additional packages tailored to specific use cases. Are you a fan of deep learning for natural language processing? Well then, my friend, you can indulge yourself with TensorFlow's Natural Language Toolkit, NLTK, integration by installing the package as follows. But remember, my friends, TensorFlow is a rapidly evolving beast, and new versions are released regularly. So always keep an eye out for the latest updates because you wouldn't want to miss out on the shiny new features and bug fixes. Now what if you're not a fan of Python, you ask? Fear not, for TensorFlow has expanded its horizons beyond the realm of Python. TensorFlow supports a wide range of programming languages, including JavaScript, C++, Java, and even Swift. So no matter your coding language of choice, TensorFlow has a delightful surprise waiting for you. For example, if you're a JavaScript aficionado, you can install TensorFlow.js and experience the wonders of machine learning right in your browser. Similarly, if you prefer the elegance of Swift, you can install TensorFlow for Swift, and delve into the world of AI with a touch of sophistication. But my dear friends, installing TensorFlow is just the beginning of our adventure. In future lectures, we shall dive deeper into the magnificent capabilities of this wondrous library. We'll explore data pre-processing, model construction, training techniques, and so much more. So stay tuned and be ready to unleash the full potential of TensorFlow. But first, what is MENIST, you ask? MENIST stands for the Modified National Institute of Standards and Technology and it's a data set of handwritten digits commonly used as a benchmark in the world of machine learning. It consists of 60,000 training images and 10,000 testing images, each representing a grayscale digit from 0 to 9. Now let's write our TensorFlow Hello World program using the MNIST dataset. Open up your favorite Python environment, import TensorFlow, and let the magic begin. Let's break down this code step by step. We import TensorFlow, the magical library that powers our machine learning adventures. We load the MNIST dataset using MNIST load data. This function gives us the training and testing sets, along with their corresponding labels. To ensure smooth training, we normalize the pixel values of the images by dividing them by 255.0, scaling them to a range of 0 to 1. We define our model architecture using the sequential API. Our model consists of a flattened layer, which reshapes the input images into a 1D array, a fully connected dense layer with 128 units and real U activation, a dropout layer to prevent overfitting, and a final dense layer with 10 units representing the 10-digit classes. We define the loss function as sparse categorical cross-entropy, which is suitable for multi-class classification problems. We compile the model specifying the optimizer, atom, and the loss function. It's training time. We call model fit to train our model on the training data for a specified number of epochs, in this case 5. Once training is complete, we evaluate the model's performance on the test set using model evaluate.